USA 9 presents Pope Francis in America, Washington, D.C. It has been a historic day in D.C. Pope Francis made a man a saint, kissed babies, hugged a little girl, and greeted thousands of admirers from around the world. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jan Jeff Coates. And I'm Leslie Foster. And of course, our Bruce Johnson has been anchoring coverage from the Basilica of the National Shrine where the canonization map mass just wrapped up. And Bruce, you got to see it with your own eyes and feel it with your own heart. Tell us what it was like to be there. That about sums it up, though. We saw it, we heard it, we felt it. Uh, I should point out that the Pope right now is in his car, that little cute Fiat that he's been driving around. He's headed back uptown uh, to 34th and Reno Road, uh, 34th and Mass, the Vatican Embassy. And as soon as we capture him on our cameras, we're going to go to Mola Lange live. The spirit of the world tells us to be like everybody else, to settle for what comes easy. We must regain the conviction that we need one another, that we have a shared responsibility for others and for the world. That's what Pope Francis said here to some 25,000 people, and we ate it all up. He had a lot more to say about looking out for one another, that it's not just about us. Stop being so selfish. I, I just thought it was a great speech. The service itself was incredible. The singing, the vibe. Uh, scores of people took communion, including many members of the media up here. It was an incredible event, one I I'm sure nobody will leave here the same as when they came in. You know, the Catholic Church also has a new saint tonight. A pope born in the Americas and called to Europe honors a missionary born in Europe and called to the Americas. Jan Jeffcoat has that story. He arrived by Pope Mobile, Pope Francis waving to a sea of people along the route to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. He came to celebrate a mass of canonization for Franciscan friar Junipero Serra, the first canonization on U.S. soil. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. In the 1700s, Serra left Spain for the New World. He ministered to the people of Mexico, then he traveled north and established Catholic missions along the California coast. The Archbishop of Washington, Cardinal Wuerl, addressed the Pope to present Serra's name for sainthood. La Santa Madre Iglesia. The Holy Mother Church earnestly beseeches Your Holiness al Beato Unipero to Serra. Enter Blessed Junipero Serra among the saints. The Pope's reply in Latin. Beatum Uniperum Serra, Sanctum Esse Decernimus et Definimus. Relics of the new saint were placed on the altar. Then Cardinal Whirl again thanking the Pope. Most Holy Father, in the name of the Holy Church, I thank Your Holiness for making this proclamation. And it was done, a new saint. Huni Pero Serra, Jan Jeffco, WUSA 9. Pope Francis said Serra lived by the motto, keep moving forward, and he urged all of us to do the same, keep moving forward. Right now, we're waiting for the Pope to arrive back at the Vatican Embassy in Northwest, where he'll spend the rest of the night, nothing else on his official schedule. Uh, we've got a live look at the scene in Northwest. We're told that Pope Francis should be there soon. You can see the crowd waiting anxiously to greet him. It's right across the street from the vice president's residence. One of the highlights of the day was the papal parade. You saw this many times over. This was the best chance for thousands of people to catch a glimpse of Pope Francis. They crowded the National Mall as the pontiff waved from a specially fitted Jeep Wrangler. People cheered and waved as the Secret Service uh, agent or two or more plucked a couple of lucky babies from the crowd for a, a special papal blessing. The most memorable moment, of course, happened when a young girl slipped through the police and Secret Service barricade and tried to greet the Pope. We have this close-up video of when it happened. She backed away when a bodyguard came near, but then the Pope spotted her and motioned for her to come to him. She let the bodyguard pick her up and bring her to Francis for a papal kiss and blessing. An immigration advocacy group says the little girl is five-year-old Sophie Cruz and she's from California. She was carrying a letter and a t-shirt with a message about the status of immigrant parents of children who are born in the U.S. The guard put both of the items in the Pope Mobile and she ran back to her family, tears streaming down her face. Clearly she and her loved ones and all of us were touched by the Pope's kind gesture.
Amazing. People from all around the world were at the parade. They were here also at the Basilica. Many of them told our Saray Chen they just wanted to be a part of history. Welcome to the USA, ho -ho. Hey, hey. Welcome to the USA. Pope Francis, all the way from Chicago. Woo! Sing with us, sing with us. The singing and the signs, all to show their love for Pope Francis. The crowd chants, we feel, we see, the Pope is present. To see the Pope uh, and like pray for him and tell him to pray for us too. We got up at 1.30 in the morning to drive here from Richmond, Virginia. And my sister and I, they, I came from Chicago. They drove all the way from Chicago. They left yesterday at 11. We just, we can't wait to see him. People have lined both sides of Constitution Avenue. Many have traveled very far to see the Holy Father. It's like a chance to, for all of us to get together and just celebrate whatever, like uh, Catholicism and stuff. And you traveled all the way from where? From Doha, Qatar. We came all the way from Michigan. The young and the old and everyone in between want to be in the presence of the Pope. She's happy because she's 86 and she's here. It's a Catholic face to see the Pope. He's the head of the church. For some, it's a deep connection of faith towards the Pope, and sometimes it's the simple things. The fact that I love about him is that he loves to take selfies. I think that's awesome, and he's like, he, the way that he talks to people is just amazing. We want peace for all the Christians and all over the world. That's what we want from him. Pope Francis started his day at the White House. More than 15,000 people on the South Lawn to witness the historic joint appearance by Pope Francis and President Barack Obama. Our Andrea McCarran was there. The Pope's remarks here at the White House offered a preview of what he may say to Congress. He did not shy away from controversial issues, from climate change to immigration to marriage. By the time Pope Francis left the White House, he'd etched a lasting impression on the thousands who gathered to hear him speak, including a delegation of hundreds of cardinals and bishops. So, the Pope jumped right into controversial issues like immigration. As the son of an immigrant family, I'm happy to be a guest in this country, which was largely built by such families. Barack Obama and Louis Saint-Père and Papa Francesco entrerà. Have to bite out of the As journalists from around the world documented his first visit to the United States. The Pope spent the greatest portion of his speech on climate change. Mr. President, I find it encouraging that you are proposing an initiative for reducing air pollution. President Obama applauded the Pope's efforts to help the poor, the sick, and the vulnerable. You shake our conscience from slumber and give us confidence that we can come together in humility and service. President Obama gave Pope Francis two gifts. First, the sculpture of a dove, which is the international symbol of peace and the Christian symbol for the Holy Spirit. He also gave the Pope a key to the Maryland home of Elizabeth Ann Seton. She's the first native-born American to be declared a saint. At the White House, Andrea McCarran, WUSA 9. We should could tell you how all these people who were at the Basilica got here and how they're going home. I'm going to assume a lot took Metro. Metro this morning was saying the ridership was down 14%. That means a lot of federal and local government workers stayed at home, did a lot of telecommute. Uh, telecommuting and it also means that a lot of people were walking to this event here in uh, northeast you saw a lot of people on the sidewalks and that's a good thing i suppose leslie uh, jan let's go back to you and it looks like a lot of people have started to clear out already yeah uh, now that the mass is over bruce may be there by himself for a little <laughs> while <laughs> all right thank you and of course pope francis wraps up his dc visit tomorrow he'll start with a historic speech to a joint session of Congress and then thousands of people are expected to gather outside the Capitol to watch it live on jumbotrons. They might also catch a glimpse of Francis when he makes a quick appearance on the west steps of the Capitol. Then, of course, it's over to St. Patrick's Catholic Church and the Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese, where he's expected to serve lunch to hundreds of the district's less fortunate. We know that is a really important part of what this pope intends to do. And after that, Pope Francis will rest up before his 4 o'clock flight to New York City.
If you're planning on heading to the National Mall tomorrow, there's a huge list of items you need to keep at home, including big bags or signs, chairs, coolers, and selfie sticks. You can find that list plus a schedule and road closures on the free WUSA 9 app and on WUSA9.com. You'll also be able to watch all of the events live. Topper? Well, what a great day for the Pope. What a great beginning to fall. Here are the low temps tonight. Kind of chilly. Uh, 50 in Leesburg tonight, 51 in Haymarket, Manassas, even downtown will be 59 or 60. We'll come back. We'll tell you how temps recover tomorrow and look ahead to some unsettled weather over the weekend. And we are waiting for Pope Francis to pull back into the Vatican Embassy for the night. That should happen any minute now. We hope to bring it to you live. Coming up. Not everyone was happy to hear the Pope's message. Some protesters were willing to be arrested while trying to make their voices heard. But they were the minority at a D.C. cathedral today where Catholic leaders held prayers with the pontiff. The Pope took part in a midday prayer service here at the historic Cathedral of St. Matthew. It was an opportunity for bishops from around the country to meet in person with Pope Francis. It looked like a convention of bishops as 10 buses pull up to the cathedral and 300 of them step out. The anticipation grows and minutes later, Pope Francis arrives in that small black fiat. Washington's Archbishop Cardinal Donald World greets Francis with a huge smile. A shout from a fellow Hispanic in the press corps catches the Pope's attention and a wave. The Takis picture for me is very, very emotional. Pope Francis is led into St. Matthew's, the mother church for Washington's Catholics, to lead a midday prayer before hundreds of local Catholics. It was spectacular. It was really great. You know? Just as the midday prayer begins, protesters a block away just outside the extremely tight security zone block Connecticut Avenue. They want to see the church allow women priests. So we are here to deliver a message to Pope Francis about the equality of women and to recognize that he has left women out of all of his conversations. When they refuse to move and police begin arresting and moving them, spectators cheer. Their issue was not mentioned by the Pope in his remarks today, but another even more sensitive issue was. And when we bring succor, then the victims are healed and we have to hope that such crimes will never repeat themselves. Attendees were pleased at his frank discussion. I think it was great that he hit it head on. It's, um, I think he's trying to make a point that it's a fact, we're going to get through it and you need to be very aware of it. I think it'll make changes I, and I don't know how yeah. fast it'll happen but I, you know people got to start getting serious about something. And this young lady got to sing for the Pope. It was amazing. He's just got this amazing aura. Her mother was ecstatic. <laughs> I said this is what I want for my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. To go and see the Pope and see my daughter sing. It was a memorable day for all here. At St. Matthew's, Peggy Fox, WUSA 9. And all day long, we've been introducing you to the people who have traveled near and far to try and catch just a glimpse of Pope Francis. Our Allison Barber has the story of one family who drove 18 mm -hmm. hours for their son. The Martinez family stood on this sidewalk and held their 11 year old son over the fence here, hoping the Pope Mobile would stop. On Sunday, Eva and Francisco Martinez packed up their car and headed north. We got in our car on Sunday and came up from Miami, Florida. Um, to see the Pope. They came with their two children, Christina and Simon. He has a rare metabolic disorder. He suffered brain damage when he was six months old. Each one had expectations for the day. The Pope's mission for this uh, trip is love is his mission and that's our mission. Maybe he'll just touch me in some sort of special way and touch all of us here. But most of their hopes revolved around Simon. I hope that uh, he actually approaches us and that he can and maybe send a little blessing my son's way. Well, he's very aware of everything that's happening. He's a smart little guy, and so he would absolutely love it. For hours, they sat inside the theological college and waited. When they finally ventured down to the road where Pope Francis would drive by, they lifted their son and once again waited until finally they saw police lights. Pope Francis passed in front of them, and just as quickly as he appeared, he was gone. It wasn't the exact moment they dreamed of, but somehow it still exceeded their expectations. It's just a glimpse, a glimpse of heaven, a glimpse of Christ. It's just surreal, you know, to see him in person and, and 
see the Vicar of Christ driving by. And Simon never stops smiling. He is very special to us and he brings joy to everybody. It was a special day for a lot of people, certainly a special day for this family. In Northwest, I'm Ellison Barber, WUSA 9. And the Martinez family was able to get so close to the Pope thanks to the nonprofit called the National Catholic Partnership on Disabilities. We have so many pictures and videos from this historic day in D.C. that we cannot just fit all of them into the newscast, unfortunately, but we do have them all on WUSA9.com and on the free WUSA9 app. After the break, Topper's got a look at the weather for the Pope's last day in the district. You're watching WUSA 9 and your only local news at 7. Always watching, always tracking. WUSA 9's first alert weather, D.C.'s most accurate. All right, a beautiful evening, a beautiful day, and right now live look outside. It's our live Michael and Snow weather cam. It's still 74. Look at the dew point. I pointed out 49. It's really below 50 this time of year. Relative humidity 41%. At the peak heating of the day, the humidity was only 28%. Kind of a treat for us. What that means is it's going to be kind of chilly tonight. Clear skies, calm winds, and low humidity. Clear and almost chilly. In fact, bus stop temperatures 50 to about 70. So if you're out there early, I think a sweatshirt's a pretty good idea. Still very warm tomorrow. And then showers and drizzle threaten Friday, and quite frankly, they threaten Saturday and Sunday as well. Uh, by 10 o'clock tonight, we're in the 60s primarily, 61 in Frederick, uh, maybe 62 out toward uh, Gaithersburg and Bowie and Olney, and 64 in Leesburg and Manassas. And then by morning, mm, it's kind of uh, cool. I mean, 52 in Frederick, I think these numbers are actually a bit high, uh, maybe 61 downtown, but 54 in Leesburg, even 57 in La Plata. By 9 o'clock, we're back in the 60s. By 1 o'clock, sunshine. Another gorgeous day, 78 at 1 o'clock downtown, 75 in Hagerstown and Cumberland as well. So uh, for a uh, day plan, it looks like this, 66 at 9 o'clock, 73 at 11, full sun, and 78 at 1 o'clock. We're still in pretty good shape tomorrow. Let me go downhill. Showers or drizzle possible Friday, 76. Uh, heaviest activity south, and then more showers and drizzle possible Saturday, only 72 next seven days. Sunday may, may have the same pattern, and then we break out into sunshine on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, back in the low 80s on Wednesday. We'll be back right after this. Hi, Bruce Johnson back here at the Basilica. They're wrapping up here. Everything will be cleared out of here probably by 11, 1130 tonight. We're tracking the Pope. We're told that right now he's on Florida Avenue making his way north to the Vatican Embassy across the street from the Vice President's residence. Let's go to Mola Lange, who's standing by live to bring that shot to us. Mola. Well, Bruce, it looks like the front end of the uh, convoy may have uh, started to, uh, to pull in here. we got some secret agents who are uh, uh, pulling in. We're being told that the uh, Pope is uh, on Florida Avenue as about a, a minute ago, so we're expecting him uh, really at any moment right now looking for that fiat. You know, once you see that fiat, you know that means a Pope, and he will be greeted as he is every time he has come back here to the Vatican Embassy by uh, just uh, groups, scores of people. These are all Catholic school children here uh, who are waiting uh, to see him, and as we mentioned, and every time the Pope has come to or left the Vatican Embassy there, and that's been several times today, uh, he's just been uh, greeted with these crowds. He embraces and hugs the, the, the Catholic school children who have uh, been screaming with excitement uh, to see him as they are uh, waiting for his uh, arrival right now. You know, just a few hours ago, I heard one of these Catholic school students out here, couldn't have been older than 10, 11, 12 years old, say to another one that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So even at that young age, they seem to be able to grasp how special and unique of a moment this is. Okay. Live at the Vatican Embassy, Bruce, back to you. Mola, thanks a lot. I should remind you, the Pope is 78 years old. He's getting back there to the Vatican. He needs his rest. You can see as he left here, I mean, he was being held up on both sides. He's had a very intense day. Hopefully he gets some rest, and we'll see him back here tomorrow in the best of health. Mola Lange, thanks a lot for that. Going to send it back to the studio, you guys. He's got a big task tomorrow to address Congress. Absolutely. He'll need all his energy for that, and, of course, meeting with homeless people yeah, later Catholic in the day. Catholic Charities, that's, that's right. right. Thank you so much, Bruce. We'll see you back here at 11. And remember, you can follow along with all of our coverage live on the free WUSA 9 app because we're actually streaming it. That's right. We'll be back at 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a miraculous day. We'll sum it all up again at 11 o'clock.